Hey everyone, welcome to your summary video on dictionaries and sets. As always, you guys know the drill. The code is up on my GitHub, Caleb Curry, and then it's 07 dictionaries sets.py. Alright, so let's just paste this code in our editor and go through it. Alright, we got a long one today, 262 lines, so let's not waste any time. The very first thing is how to create a dictionary. And it works by using curly braces and then key value pairs, and you separate the key from the value using a colon. If you've worked with JavaScript objects or JSON data, the syntax is very similar to what we have here. It's the equivalent of an associative array, and the data structure behind this dictionary is a hash table, meaning the keys are hashed to decide where to store that data in memory. So imagine in memory we have reserved maybe eight spots to begin with, we take the data, we hash it, and based off the result of the hash, we determine which of those spots to store the data in. So to show you an example of this, what it might look like is we hash the string hello, and we use modulus eight to get a number between zero and seven. So let's take a look at the output. So this is the hash of hello, and then using the modulus, we get the value one. So you can imagine storing it at that position, index one in memory. Now, just to be clear, I'm just using this for illustration. The actual process might be a little bit different for Python, and I'm sure you could figure out the exact details on how we go from a key to a memory position in Python. But for now, this gets the point across on how we take some data and turn it into an index under some number. Now the data on the left needs to be hashable, and it's generally for immutable types, or anyways, it should be. And for example, a tuple will work, but a list will not, as a list does not have a hash ability. The reason you might want to use a hash table or in Python a dictionary is that it's extremely fast to add or look up data. It's constant time, meaning if the size of the dictionary doubles, the time to insert and retrieve stays exactly the same. To retrieve data from a dictionary, all you have to do is pass in the key to the dictionary with square brackets, similar to how you would use a number with a list, but now instead of using a number, you use the actual key value. If you're using strings, make sure that the casing is exactly the same. Here we have Caleb with a capital C, and that matches up here with this capital C here. If it was lowercase here, then that would not be a match. But that is where we get this output right here. If you want to be careful about getting any exceptions thrown if the data is not found, what you could do is you could case to see if it's in the dictionary, and then if it is, you could grab it. Or a better way is to use this get method, which will return none if it's not found, or you can override the default by passing in a value here, such as not found. And in this case, we get both those results here. Now to add data to a dictionary, the easiest thing to do is just to use square brackets and the key, and then assign it some value. If you'd prefer to insert multiple things, you can use the update method, pass in a dictionary here. In this case, we just have one piece of data, but you could go in and put a comma followed by another key value pair. Then there's another variation here where you can put the key like so and assign it a value all within the update method. Keep in mind, the key must be hashable, which we talked about. So here's an example of using a tuple. Here's an example of using an int but here's an example of using a list and that's not going to work. If you want to loop through the data, there's different ways of doing this. The first is to say 4K in whatever the dictionary name is, we'll just say emails and then print K. K is short for key, but it's just a variable so you can call it whatever you want. And then you could actually access the data by saying emails of K. This is one way to do it, but an alternative is to actually iterate through the items and on the left say K comma lm to represent the element, and you can print k in the element. So that's where we get this output right here. Next up, we show an example of what you might use a dictionary for. So we basically have this dictionary of conjunctions. We have this string. We turn it into a list of words, and we count all of the conjunctions. Anytime a conjunction is found, we increase that number by one, and afterwards, but is found once, and and is found once. As mentioned, you could easily wrap this in a function to take a message and words to look for, and it could return a dictionary, but you can try that if you want. This works fine. Next up, we talked about sets, which similar to dictionaries, they use hashing, but there's no longer key value pairs. So you just put in the values by themselves and there's no duplicates. Same for dictionaries, you can't have duplicate keys. 
So when we pass in sword, again, see sword already exists, it doesn't add another sword, we still only have one sword in the set. So after we print it, you can see it remains exactly the same. We can use sets to do something similar to check for certain things, but it's not going to count, it's just going to be a yes or no kind of thing. So let's say we're looking for these words, we can keep a set to keep track of which ones are seen, and then what we can do is, if it is in there, we can add it to that set. And as a result, and and but are seen, but it doesn't say how many times they've been seen. Next up, we're talking about removing duplicates from a list. And this is interesting in that we're basically using the set to our advantage to remove things from the list. So we take a list, we convert it to a set, and then we convert it back to a list, and then we replace all the elements in the original list. So we're left with the same object in memory, but we got rid of all of the duplicates and now we're just left with green, blue, and red. Now keep in mind, because sets are unordered, the order does not stay the same in the list, and you can't expect it to. You can, however, then pass this list to sorted, or use the sort method to get whatever sort you want. What next? Well, we talked about how to count individual elements in a list. So we would say red would be one, green would be two, and then blue would be three in this situation. And we did that with list comprehension, using set of colors to make it work. So we only count red one time, we count green one time, and blue one time. And as a result, we get a list of lists where the number of occurrences and the color are in each of the inner lists. Last up, we talked about different things we can do with sets, specifically unions and intersections, and then later on we did differences. So a union is combining all of the elements in the set. So all of these with all of these. And there's not gonna be any duplicates. So the result for this is this set right here. If you do that with the pipe symbol. An intersection is the elements shared between the both of them. So that's going to be green, purple, and blue. There are also method versions of this. So dot union and dot intersection. So there's examples on how you would use those. Next up, we talked about difference and symmetric difference. So the difference is going to be taking all of the elements of one list out of another list. So we say my favorite minus her favorite to get the colors only I like. You could do it the other way around by subtracting my favorite from her favorite, and that's only her colors. The symmetric difference is like combining both of these. So it'd be like taking the union of only my colors and only her colors. And the way you can do this syntactically is to take the original sets, my favorite and her favorite, and use this caret symbol to get the symmetric difference. And as a result, you're going to get red, black, and orange, which is all of the colors that I like and she doesn't like, unioned with all the colors she likes and I don't like. So yeah, that one's a little bit confusing. If you want to visualize these different set operations, here is a Venn diagram that you can think of. So union is gonna just be everything. Intersection is this little piece in the middle here. Difference is taking just one side and nothing inside of the middle or the other circle. And then lastly, symmetric intersection is taking all of this data on one side with all of this data on the other side and nothing in the middle. So yes, that is a lot of information, but try your best to understand how this stuff works and just go through all these examples and understand the code. I know it's not that easy, I'm just telling you to understand it, but go through enough examples such that it makes sense. And that's all I got for dictionaries and sets. Stay tuned for the next section, and I'm actually getting really excited for where this series is going, so I hope you guys are as well. And please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this content.